This is Twit. Elon Musk is the hero. Iron Man is back. Yeah. So it's a tragic, a tragic tale of two astronauts uh, off on an eight-day cruise to the International Space Station on a, a fine Boeing uh, vehicle who uh, <laughs> found out that the Boeing vehicle uh, oh. had some thruster issues. NASA said, ah, yay, 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 we don't can. And they, there's, they've been stuck there. They've been stuck there. Sunita Williams and Barry Butch Wilmore have been unable to get home because the Starliner is unreliable. NASA thought about it, thought about it, and and finally on Friday they announced what they're going to do. They've been in space for two months, a little longer than the eight days. They're they're rationing clothing at this point. There's plenty of food. They don't have to worry about air. I mean, you know, but they they didn't you know bring. <laughs> I, I think they told their family we'll be home next week. Mm -mm. So NASA has announced that they are not going to let the Boeing Starliner bring them back. They're going to return it to Earth uncrewed, just in case. Because if this thruster thing doesn't work, uh, it could be disastrous, right? That's how they get back into the atmosphere and through it. Uh, they've announced that SpaceX has now got the contract, and in February, SpaceX... Uh, uh, flight will come to the space station and uh, take the two home. The way SpaceX's uh, Dragon works, they, I think they have four seats, so maybe they'll on that flight on that mission send up two astronauts and then come back with four. Uh, just another black mark for Bowen, Sam. <laughs> yeah, they uh, yeah, they can't seem to get anything right lately. Uh, Jeez, it, Louise. You know, Ever ever since they merged with McDonnell Douglas in 1997, it has been just a steady downhill stream for Boeing, uh, because the the management there has been more focused on on the financials than on actually producing good products. And you know, really, you know, you, Boeing used to be known as a great engineering company, and for the last 25 years it's just been a complete mess um you know every every program every new aircraft program they've done um whether it's civilian or, or uh, military or space has just been a catastrophe and you know from the the 787 uh to the the triple seven x the 737 max um the kc-46 tanker for the military everything's been completely screwed up and they, Boeing just announced a new CEO a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they brought in a um, former executive from, uh, uh, is it, uh, Ray, not, not Raytheon. Um, oh, I, f I forget. It's, it's a company that makes avionics systems for aircraft. And uh, he just started last week. You know, it's going to take a while to really get Boeing's organization and culture back on track that's not something you turn around overnight i mean this is this is a problem that was 25 years in the making and it's probably going to take years to sort out what's gone wrong at boeing kelly ortberg will be yeah. taking over he's from uh, rockwell collins yeah he's yeah he started last week and um you know the starliner has just been plagued with problems uh long before they had its first launch uh, they've had all kinds of hardware issues software issues with that capsule um the first they the original plan was they were going to do an an uncrewed flight uh into orbit and then do a crewed flight into orbit well the first uncrewed flight had so many issues that they had to do they, they spent two years working on it and had to do another uncrewed flight before they would allow astronauts on it and then that one still had a bunch of issues but they thought they had it all you know under control and now you know this time you know it launched okay but then once they got up into space they discovered leaks and issues with these with these thrusters that help with maneuvering and as you said you know those those maneuvering thrusters if they're not working when a spacecraft comes down comes back into the atmosphere it has to be in exactly the right orientation or it burns up yeah and you know, so they cannot or afford. Or it skips on to, the atmosphere and heads out to deep space. Yeah, so they it can't can afford really to, badly. They can't afford to mess that one up. So it makes yeah. it makes sense that they're going to bring back those two astronauts on a crew dragon instead. Yeah, 
you kind of, you know, it must have been a tough decision for NASA. It's especially tough because NASA really had hoped to have at least two companies working on this, mm -hmm. Boeing and uh, SpaceX. And Boeing has just fa failed. At this point, It they are so reliant on Elon. And this is something that... <laughs> You know, I'm kind of dealing with this myself. You know, I have uh, up here in the studio, we're on Comcast Business, and it's been acting funny. It dropped out a couple of times last week. So we ordered, uh, what else? I had no other choice. I was It was either DSL from AT&T. That wasn't going to do it. Or, and we got one uh, from uh, from SpaceX, a, uh, a you know, Starlink. <laughs> and I feel, I feel kind of, I feel kind of dirty. <laughs> I mean, look, at least at least uh, the people are going to potentially be getting home safe, right? Like that's yeah. that's the more important thing. Than well, that's home. important, yeah. But 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 the real concern of the U.S. government is how reliant we are on 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 a guy who really seems somewhat unstable. Yeah, but I mean, at the same point, to, I think to Sam's point, like this is twenty five years in the making for Boeing, where they've made mistake oh, after yeah. mistake after mistake. Oh no, they earned it. <laughs> you know, right? And 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 I, you have to wonder. It's like, okay, well, as the government, like, why have you? I do have questions about them and about NASA. Why have they not been more exacting? Why have they not demanded more from their yeah. suppliers? Well, as I said, I think nobody wants to have a single source, right? Right. Especially a source that is maybe as unpredictable as Elon. There's an article about Elon and Starlink. You know, the Ukrainian military was using Starlink, but Elon forbade them, blocked them from using it uh, in, in, a, in a mission uh, that they wanted to do because he thought it was, ah, you're going to, it's not good. We don't want to cause a nuclear war so i'm not going to let you use it uh he's making foreign policy decisions in effect because he controls starlink and he's i mean i don't think anybody would deny a little unpredictable i don't know what his priorities are anyway thank goodness he's there to you know what i shouldn't knock it right because he's going to save these uh these two astronauts Thank goodness he has a, a system that works. One of the reasons they wanted Boeing, according to The Atlantic, is that uh, SpaceX's bid seemed impossibly low. And uh, they thought, well, we, can we trust this guy? Well, I mean, both of them had cost overruns, but it turned out that they could trust SpaceX and they, could, and they can't trust Boeing. Um Right now, according to uh, The Atlantic, must, NASA has no other reliable way to send people to space from U.S. soil. They used to use Russian uh, vehicles. Obviously, they're not going to do that anymore. Right. Uh, and, and with Boeing's flop, no prospect of a second option for potentially years to come. You know, what, one of the issues is that, you know, I mean, the problems with the Boeing Starliner have been so long, have been going on so long that NASA really should have gotten another supplier going mm -hmm. years ago. Right. You know, it was clear that Boeing was not going to be able to get the get its problems sorted out this quickly or, or you know, the, in, in any kind of reasonable time frame. And they should have had a third source. Yeah, they can't quit who, SpaceX. Who would, who would be the competitor? Like, would, would you are you looking at like Blue Origin or someone like that? I'm thinking that or, they might. And, what about Blue the ESA? What about the European Space Agency? They, they don't have a uh, accrued. Uh, vehicle uh, that they can send up. They have rockets that they can use to launch satellites. They do not have a crewed vehicle. Yeah. Um, and right now, there there isn't, you know, Blue Origin is so far behind schedule as well. Blue Origin was supposed to be uh, launching, or they were supposed to be supplying their engines, their rocket engines, to ULA, uh, which is the joint venture between uh, Lockheed Martin and, uh, and Boeing um, that was the other company that was launching satellites uh, for the U.S. military. And, um, you know, the ULA had been for years been using actually Russian rocket motors on their launch vehicles. And that that's no longer an option. You know, they can't get those anymore. I think they just launched their last rocket, uh, their, their, their last couple of uh, those Russian uh, rocket motors. And they had been planning to use the Blue Origin uh, rocket motors, but Blue Origin is years behind schedule as well. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be, do you think, I mean, there are so many space startups now. Um, people have, you know, SpaceX has, there's like a bit of a SpaceX mafia, you know, diaspora of, of entrepreneurs now. Do you think that it'll just take time and eventually there will be sort of a competitive private space market? 
It can't take too long. The ISS is going to be deorbited in 2030, <laughs> five years. Yeah. So uh, I think Elon. I think Elon's got this one. I think SpaceX is probably going to be fully responsible for uh, sending uh, astronauts to the uh, ISS for the United States. But you're right. I mean, if we want to continue space exploration, it feels like we should we should get some competing bids. Yeah, I do have kind of a. a, a pseudo related kind of query for for you all as the, as as you know american tech companies go which one is is the bigger kind of embarrassment or or you know kind of the failures is it intel is it boeing oh yeah yeah i would say it's boeing, <laughs> for um, sure, boeing. you know in, in, intel's problems Provocative. you know as, as big as they are um generally don't haven't killed people yet oh, oh fair enough I, I just mean i think in terms of just like the, the enormity of like where we've seen like these great institutions just yeah really become fall apart but yeah i mean i think you make a good case for, for boeing they definitely have cost people's lives so that's yeah you know i mean like yeah. i said i'm kind of in the in microcosm of the same problem which is i don't you know and, and this is true in everywhere in america you don't have many options for high-speed internet in many cases just one as in my case and it's a cable company so um thank goodness that starlink exists i guess mm -hmm. um i uh i think my my observation my elon observation is just that it's it's so remarkable you know just his personality and the things that he's decided to to go and say how much that has affected him i mean if you look at twitter had he decided not to go and and say all these you know pretty terrible things um right after he bought still the company. be uh, iron I mean, man <laughs> it would be the 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 amount like it would be one of the great business turnarounds yes. in history right i mean you just get rid totally. of most of the staff and it, had he not shot himself in the foot with advertising and then here you've got this situation where i mean it seems like you know basically you know a government agency saying we will literally take like Boeing, not knowing if they can get the job done because we don't want to work with this Elon guy, um, or we'll do everything we can to 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 avoid having to work with him on this. And then you talk about like broadband. I mean, they're not working with with Starlink. I mean, they say it's because the the equipment's too expensive, right? For these for these like rural broadband programs. But I mean, it's clearly it's it's just clearly because you know they're scared it, it, of like, Elon. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, it's just amazing how, like, despite the fact that he's, that he has these, you know, that feels the need to kind of like say the most crazy things publicly, he's still able to, you know, be so This is successful. related a little bit to Pavel Dura flying into Paris, right? It's like these guys, um, yeah. it's hubris is the word you used, right, Christina? It's, uh, yeah. they, um, they think they're untouchable. Elon Clearly. And, and you know what? Maybe he could make a case that the reason he's so successful is because he's an iconoclast, because he's willing to do things and say things that no one else will do or say, that he, is, that he breaks the mold. Maybe that's the secret of his success. So who are we to say, yeah, but you're weird. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable. This Week in Tech, I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.